Hi, good morning. Happy Sunday to everyone. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, magandang magandang umaga sa iyo. Uh, Maligayang araw ng pagsamba sa umaga na to. Uh, we will be continuing on our uh, two-part mini-series na Working for God, Ephesians 6, 5 to 9. So last Wednesday, um, this is about uh, a series about being a salt and light in my workplace as an employee and an employer. Last Wednesday, we talk about being a salt and light in my workplace as an employee muna. As a follower, as a servant, you know, um, a team player. And uh, just to recap, no, before we go to our main topic for this uh, morning, uh, we read about uh, Ephesians 6, 5 to 8, in verse natin, last Wednesday, at yung verse natin for this morning is uh, Ephesians 6, uh, uh, 7 to 9. So, uh, let's have a recap. In Ephesians 6, 5 to 8, it says there, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them, not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Verse 7, serve full-heartedly, as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one of whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. So uh, just to recap, uh, we had this question last Wednesday, how to make yourself so valuable that your job remains secure, lalo na yung pandemic. And Paul shared to us three very important lessons no, in chapter, Ephesians chapter 6, 5 to 8. First, he shared to us to be focused. Second, he, sh he shared to us to be credible as Christians. And he shared to us to be exceptional in our workplace. In uh, being focused, uh, remember that he shared to us that uh, he asks us, what is your motive? No? In serving God, in going to your workplace, what is your motive? Is it serving the people? Is it serving your boss? Is it serving the company? Paul is trying to convey to us a message that our motive should be serving God and uh, respecting the authority above you because they are the designated authority by God given to you. So also, uh, uh, we learned last Wednesday that uh, we should do this because it's the will of God. Everybody's trying to uh, find what is God's will, and this is it. You need to be focused, and you need uh, your motive should be in service of God. And... Uh, we have this question also last Wednesday that uh, we asked, what is God's will for me in my career? So we answered that uh, according to Paul then. That is to render excellent service. Excellent service for God. Not uh, the motive is really, you know, lagi nakatuon kay Kristo. Paano ko ba siya mapagsiservisyohan ng tama? No, wala ka ng ibang titingnan. So ang manifestation nun, magandang trabaho, ay kinabang yung company, matutuwa ang boss, and masaya lahat ng team, uh, team, teammates mo sa workplace. Uh, doon sa so verse na binasa natin kanina, it explained that uh, we should do this, no, the will of God, because you will have a reward from God if you will do this. No? And uh, remember that you are also a representation of Christ in your workplace. In 1 Peter 2.9, it says, but you are a chosen people. Wow, di ba? Sarap pakinggan. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And uh, God is calling you also to excel for him, uh, to excel your life for the glory of Jesus Christ. And... Uh, Excel for the Lord. No? In a, uh, remember that uh, uh, we are being reminded to excel. Bakit? Kasi people are, people are looking at your behavior. Kasi when you claim to be a Christian, a follower of Christ, people will start looking at you in like, ano, parang fish sa isang aquarium. 
Itingnan nila yung behavior mo. In 1 Peter 2.12, it says that live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. God is uh, asking you to, you know, uh, show good conduct because people will be looking at your good conduct. They will be observing your conduct. In First Peter 2, 18-19, it says, Slaves in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. Wow. Speaking of conduct, imagine mo, in encourage tayo ni Peter na uh, you need to submit yourself you know, to your master. You know, not only do sa mabait, pati doon sa mga harsh pati dun sa mga medyo antibiotic. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. Second uh, point na sinabi ni Paul, mabalik tayo kay Paul, the Ephesians 6, 5 to uh, 8. Uh, be credible. No? He is encouraging us to be credible in our workplace. In Matthew 5, 20, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses the of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So, ano sinasabi dito? Paul is encouraging us to forget about, you know, protecting our reputation because reputation is just people, you know, what people think of you, you know? You need to focus on your character. Your character is what God knows of you. Remember, you cannot outrun God. You cannot uh, hide anything from God. So he knows you, even though you try to uh, uh, put a facade that is your reputation or whatever. Or whatever. God knows you. Kilala ka niya. So alam niya kung ano yung mali sa'yo, ano yung tama sa'yo. So Paul is encouraging us sa magpakatotoo tayo and um, makakatulong na i-emulate natin yung, uh, yung ugali ng Diyos, yung karakter niya ay mag-manifest sa ating buhay. And uh, also he's like... Uh, uh, part of being credible is that we should be respectful. Uh, anong ibig sabihin? In Titus 2, 9-10, uh, sabi dito, teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them, not to talk back to them. Oh, please the master. No? Be, be respectful. Not to talk back to them. Ibig sabihin, wag mo silang sagot-sagutin. Wag kang sumisigaw din. Or, uh, uh, pwede rin na um, uh, wag, wag mo silang pag-usapan habang nakapalikod sila. No? Uh, uh, and not to steal from them. No? But to show that they can be fully trusted in every way, they will make the teaching about God, our Savior, attractive. Aside from being respectful, we are also being uh, asked by God to be honest. No? Even others are not. Be honest, even others will not. Be honest, even others cannot. Now, he who walks honestly, walks securely, sabi nga sa mundo. Now, balikan natin in verse 10. Sabi doon, and not to steal from them. So, oh, yung mga simple pag-uwiwi ng mga ballpen, stapler, pag-uwi mo, mga gamit sa opisina, <laughs> let's not steal from our employers. Also, uh, and encourage them tayo to be trustworthy. Diba? Sabi doon, to show that they can be fully trusted. Ayan, napagkakatiwalaan daw tayo dapat. And we are uh, also to be models, no? Sabi doon, so that in every way, they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. Imagine mo, na glorify mo yung Diyos dahil sa ugali mo, nag-glorify mo yung Diyos sa dahil sa pagiging credible mo, nag-glorify mo yung Diyos dahil sa, pag, sa maganda mong character, you're respectful, you're honest, and you are trustworthy, and you are a good model. And last but not the least, last Wednesday, we talked about yung third truth no, na sinayang ni Paul. Doon sa verse na yun, sabi niya, be exceptional. Magka-cut about the rest. Ano ibig sabihin nito? No, in Matthew 5.16, it says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Hmm. Exceptional, being exceptional, ibig sabihin, you need to raise the bar. Taasan mo yung pamantayan ng iyong trabaho, yung iyong work ethics para sa Panginoon. So again, be focused, be credible, and be 
exceptional. Again, welcome to Walk by Faith Church of the Nazarene. Ayan, excited na ba kayo? Uh, welcome, welcome po. And um, we are also known as a as the Los Angeles LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. This is your Sunday service, and uh, we wish to uh, we we are so glad na kasama namin kayo ngayong umaga. Allow me to share my screen to you guys. Yan. So let's start for this. Uh, morning, our topic would be, no? Nakapansin nyo, sa likod ko, in background, sabi, who is better, boss or leader? Ayan. Uh, God is calling us to be a leader, not to boss around people. He's calling us to lead, not to boss around. Meron ng joke na Naalala ko dati, ano daw ang difference? What is the difference no? between your boss and time? Sabi nila, you can kill time. Chop lang. <laughs> of course, you cannot kill your boss. <laughs> Biro lang, oh. even thinking, napapatayin mo yung boss mo sa isip, eh, kasalanan po yun. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to work. Baka magalit yung boss natin. Speaking of boss, kasi... Pag kasi boss, uh, ang boss kasi mayroong big ego eh. Alam niyo yun. Ang leader, ano siya eh, uh, team player. No? He, he considers himself as part of the team. He's a team member who leads other team members. Pero ang boss kasi, he's above the rest na parang, you know, I'm kind of different from you. So he has this big ego, narcissistic, no? narcissist itong mga to eh, no? I love myself. That's all that matters. Uh, narcissistic in a sense that when I look at I don't see my, baga, um, I don't see my crush. But when I do, I'm looking in the mirror. <laughs> Ganon ka narcissistic. Ibig sabihin po nun, eh, baga, mahal na mahal yung sarili. Believe na believe sa sarili. Gwapong gwapo sa sarili. You know? At ang uh, feeling niya, eh, siya ang pinakamagaling sa lahat ng tao sa buong mundo. So, Wag, hindi po tayo tinawag na gano'n. Tinawag po tayo maging leader, hindi lang tayo tinawag maging boss. Okay? In Ephesians 6, 7 to 8, it says, Serve wholeheartedly. No? If you were serving the Lord, not people. Because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. So this is applicable doon sa employee. This is applicable also doon sa employer. Pero ito yung main text natin no? for this morning. Ephesians 6, 9. And masters, leaders, no? mga bossing, mga, mga supervisors, mga managers, those people who, in the, who are in the leadership position na merong, no? people are, merong sila mga followers. Sabi dito, and masters, Treat your slaves, members, workers, servants, employees, aka also known as, in the same way. No? Do not threaten them. Bag mo daw tinatakot. Bag mo daw binubuli. Since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. Tandaan nyo, yung master nila at yung master mo, iisa lang na nasa Panginoon sa, na, 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 na ang pangalan ay Lord Jesus Christ, parehas kayo ng Master na nasa langit. And there is no favoritism with Him. Siya mismo. No, walang favoritism sa Kanya. You should, you should uh, uh, emulate God's uh, perspective in looking at uh, His children, uh, His people. So, mga Master, mga bossing, mga employer, mga leaders, mga supervisors, managers, CEO, mga business owners. <sighs> ano bang goal? Ano ba ang pinapa-achieve sa inyong goal ng Panginoon? Simple lang. Obey and please God. Ganyan lang pasimple. Obey and please God. Now, for this morning, allow me to share to you para mas maintindihan natin ang pagiging isang employer, isang CEO, isang business owner, leader, manager, supervisor, allow me to share to you the four godly masters 
the four godly supervisors, the four godly managers, the four godly business owners. Bahala na kayo mag-15 kung saan kayo, anong role niyo sa buhay ngayon. But I hope makapag-identify kayo sa sinasabi ng Panginoon. Una, the godly master, no, just like the heavenly master that we all no, uh, serve. No, ang earthly godly master, supervisor, manager, CEO, business owner, whoever, must provide for his or her people's welfare. Okay. So, tinawag ka para mag-lead. Tinawag na mare para magnegosyo, maliit man yung malaki. Tinawag ka hindi lamang para kumita ng pera. Ang pagkita ng pera ay byproduct lamang ng napakagandang uh, pananaw sa pagnegosyo. Ang pinaka concern mo is to please your heavenly master. Second is to look after the welfare of your people, of your servants, of your employees. And ayan ang kahanga-hanga, no? yung, mga, yung, mga, ano, yung mga employers, mga business owners na, de, de, na, na nag-decide and try to keep their employees sa payroll kahit na may pandemic, kahit na hindi productive yung negosyo. No, they try to get from their savings. Alam niyo sa totoo lang, honestly, I'll be honest with you guys. Karoon ng pandemic. Pero hindi naman nawala yung kayamanan sa mundo. Yung kayamanan sa mundo ay nananatili sa kamay ng kakaunting tao. Kung mag-decide lamang itong mga kakaunting tao na to, na tinatawag na rich and famous and successful. At ipapamahagi nila yung pera nila sa panahon ng kagipitan at pandemic. Wala naman tayong problema. Magan pa sisigla pa rin yung economy, may kinabang ng lahat ng tao. Baka sakali, no? Ay pumunta pa sila sa langit. Imagine niyo. Imagine niyo kung maraming marami kang pera at i-release mo yan sa panahon ng pandemic. Imagine mo kung paano ibabalik sa inan sa yan. Um, imagine mo kung ito yung panahon kasi kanina sabi natin mataas ang ego narcissistic sarili niya lang iniisip niya hindi ito yung panahon na maging ganun ito yung panahon na dapat nagbibigay tayo dapat ito yung panahon na bumubunot tayo sa bulsa at alam niyo yun nagbibigay tayo sa mga tao na kailangan mapamaliit na na tinapay man yan mapamaliit na na ilang dolyares man yan o ilang peso man yan mapaliit mapaliit pa pamalaki importante yung puso na nagbigay ka what i'm saying is kung ito yung magiging prinsipyo ng mundo wala nang magugutom wala mang problema ang sarap ng buhay habang pandemic nasa bahay ka lang may supply ka na nagagaling sa kakaunting tao na may hawak ng kayamanan ng mundo na to kaya pinananawagan tayo no ngayon na pinapaalalahanan tayo. Ikaw, leader, manager, supervisor, business owner, you must provide for your people's welfare. Ano yung sabi sa Colossians 4.1, Masters, provide your slaves with what is fair and right, what is right and fair. Because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Alam mo na meron kang master sa heaven, master din nila yun. Alam mo na yung master na din sa heaven, fair. Right. So, dapat kayain natin sila. Nagbabayad ba tayo ng buwis? Nagbabayad ba tayo ng SS? Nagbabayad ba tayo ng, ng uh, pag-ibig nila? Nagbabayad ba tayo ng overtime? May mga midnight deals pa tayo? May mga minsan, nag-release tayo ng mga, ng mga, ng mga uh, policies na hindi naman written para, alam mo yun, kunyari legal magkikreate tayo ng policy na bawal naman sa Department of Labor. Alam mo yan, uh, uh, magkikreate tayo ng mga, ng mga, uh, mga bagay-bagay na maaaring kita yung kumpanya pero malilubing empleyado. We must be right and fair. Lalong-lalong na kung krasyano tayo. No? At uh, 
tandaan natin na kumikita ang kumpanya hindi lang dahil sa negosyante, hindi lang sa atin, hindi dahil sa, sa boss tayo, hindi lang sa alam niyo, in leadership tayo. Kumikita ang kumpanya dahil may participation ang mga employees at mga servants at mga team members. So, vital yan mga yan. Alam niyo, isa sa pinaka, no, kasi sa, sa, sa business may 4Ms. Eh. May machines, methods, uh, money marketing, diba? uh, yung manpower, yung isa sa pinaka, hindi man, pinaka-importante. No? Manpower. Kasi ang machine, pag nag-breakdown, reorder ka lang naman. Eh. Papalitan yan, pa-repair mo. Diba? Yung methods, lagi naman nagpapalit-palit siya. Any other things na sa kampanya, madaling ayusin. Pero yung manpower, buhay yan. We're talking about families. We're talking about people na breadwinners. So you must be right and fair sa ating mga employees. Number two, the godly master inspires. Ayan. Alam mo ngayon katabi mo, mukha ba siyang inspiring? Tingnan niyo dito. Meet the boss. Rule number one, sabi ng boss, the worker is always wrong. <laughs> If the worker is right, refer to rule number one. Hindi tayo tinawag maging boss. Na tinawag tayong maging leader. You must be insp- ano, very inspiring. No? Uh, Kung baga, kagaya sa Panginoon. Da- uh, ang Panginoon na inspiring siya sa buhay natin. Gayun din ikaw, tinatawag ka niya maging inspiring, maging inspiration. Pag nakikita ka ba no, ng, uh, ng tao, ano ba sila? Natutuwa ba sila? Ay, si sir, ang ka-shift ko ngayon. No? Cool lang. Chill lang kami. Masaya. Walang, walang drama. Alam mo yun, He inspires us to work. Or, oh, nako, si ma'am na naman ang kasama natin ngayon. Ay, nako, puro drama to. Lahat ng problema niya sa bahay, dinadala niya sa trabaho. Ay, nako, si ma'am na naman ang kasama natin ngayon. Nager to eh. Sisigawan na naman tayo ng sisigawan. Alam mo yun, ito yung nakikita ka ba nila, pabango mo pa lang, naiinis na sila. Or yagabag pa lang ng, ng, ng takong ng sapatos mo, tatatakanta na sila. O tuwing makikita ka nila, sobrang ngiti at sobrang saya na ikaw ang kasama nila sa shift nila. Alam nyo, sa totoo lang, ang mga empleyado, eh, para mga sudyante yan. Eh. Ang, pag pumasok yan, ang unang tanong, sino teacher natin yan? Pag si teacher favorite, okay, masaya. Pag si teacher, antibiotic na ko. Problema yan. Ganun din, ano? Trabaho ako sa isang fast food. Laging, nung crew kami, ang laging tanongan namin, sino na kadzuti? Laging tanong yan, sino na kadzuti? Pag sinabing, ah, si ma'am ganito, ah, patay na, ang haba na naman ang four hours ko. Pag sinabing, ah, si sir ganito na kadzuti, okay, rock and roll. Saya yan. Saya ang kasama ng manager niya. So, ano ka ba? Inspiring ka ba? O, uh, kumbaga, medyo nakaka, nakakainis ka sa mata ng ating mga empleyado. Sabi sa Leviticus 25.43, Do not rule over them ruthlessly, but fear your God. Naalala ko dati, nagme-meeting kami. Sabi ng boss namin, may ari ng kumpanya, sabi niya. No, it's a manager's meeting, ng department heads, uh, kasi sa operations ako dati. So, merong marketing head, may accounting head, merong operations head, merong uh, purchasing. Uh, so, iba't ibang department, Monday meeting yun. And sabi ng may ari, sabi niya, bakit hindi na-audit yung, ano, yung, yung, yung vault sa isang tindahan? So, kasi ang kasi sa operations, na pag operations manager ka, meron kaya tawag na spot audit. Pwede mo i-audit anytime. Yung vault, yung, yung, yung petty cash, yung master change fund, everything pwede mo i-audit. Kahit yung sales by that hour, pwede mo i-audit. Ngayon, uh, it's a spot audit. Pero yung, yung, yung usual audit na ginagawa, accounting yun. Eh, ang report na binigay doon ay eh, para doon sa accounting, no? Eh, nagkamali yung, ano, yung boss. Nagkamali yung, uh, 
na akala niya acting operation siya may problema. So sabi nung ano, sabi nung boss, uh, the next time I see you, no? Kasi medyo ano, medyo uh, Amerikano eh. Sabi niya, the next time I I see you, I will uh, cut your head off, no? And suck your blood out. <laughs> Sa isip ko sabi ko, pwede ba mangyari? <laughs> Eh, di bang, uh, kumbaga parang pag inisip mo siya na literal, parang ang sakit na na. <laughs> And then, uh, realize na hindi pala operations dapat yung pinapagalitan niya, dapat yung accounting. Pero wala eh, the damage is done, di ba? Uh, it's ruthless. It's, it, is, it, it was a ruthless leadership. Kumbaga, hindi inspiring. Kadalasan yung sinasabi ng bibig natin. O kung ano yung sinasabi ng bibig natin, yun yung nakakasakit dun sa mga kasama natin sa trabaho. Kaya ingat-ingat tayo. Pangatlo, the godly master has God as his master. Eto, kapag ang Diyos mo pera, kapag ang Diyos mo fame, ang Diyos mo success, patay tayo dyan. Pero kapag ang Diyos mo ay ang Panginoong Buhay, si Yesu Kristo, na Panginoon mo at nagpagligtas, buhay tayo dyan. Kaya dapat ang pamantayan kung ikaw ay leader, supervisor, manager, CEO, business owner, God is above all. Siya dapat ang master mo. Nililid mo yung tao mo. No? So, nilang, uh, you, you have this moral ascendancy to lead them. Kumbaga, nakikita nila ang Diyos sa pamumuhay mo. Ibig sabihin, nakikita nila that you're submitting yourself to God. Diba? Nakikita nila na, na nagsisimba ka, nakikita nila na you're reading your, the Bible, nakikita nila na you can lead them also in a Bible study. Hindi lang na spiritual ng mga bagay na ganun, kundi sa mismo trabaho, nakikita nila na, na limbawa, may nagsuggest, post, uh, shortcutin na natin to, maglagay na tayo ng ganito sa gobyerno para matapos ang diskusyon. No? Nakikita nila na yung submission mo sa Lord, hindi, hindi makadyos yan. Sabi ng Panginoon, huwag natin gawin yan. So doon, ramdam nila, hindi lamang sa nagbabible study ka, in-invite mo sila sa church, hindi lang doon, nakikita nila sa pamumuhay, how you operating, how do you operate doon sa business mo. Yung prinsipyo ng Diyos, dala-dala mo dapat. No, you don't compromise. Baga walang shortcut. No? You don't seek the approval of men. Boss, maganda to para sa ano natin, marketing natin. Boss, maganda to. No? May masasagasaan lang tayo. No? Ang babalik na tanong ng isang godly master, isang godly supervisor, godly owner. May approval ba ng Diyos yan? Maring it has the approval of men, pero may approval ba ng Diyos yan? When your God is not concerned in our financial success, sa totoo lang, He is more concerned in your character. Kung paano nabubuo yung character mo, yung godly character mo, doon siya nakatingin. And number four, as we end, the godly master practices fairness and righteousness. Kagaya rin ng ating heavenly master. We must practice fairness and righteousness. Ephesians 6, 7 to 8, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord. Not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. First Timothy 5, 21, I charge you, sabi ni, 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 ano, ni, ni Paul, in the sight of God and Christ Jesus and the, and the elect angels, to keep these instructions without partiality and to do nothing out of favoritism. Ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, as, uh, uh, anong ibig sabihin ng the Godly Master practices fairness and righteousness? We must serve our employees. Hindi lang tayo pinagsisilbihan nila. It's a mutual servant attitude, servant heart attitude. No? Tinawag tayo for servant leadership. Parang si Jesus, servant leadership. No? He came to serve, not to be served. No? Baga, pinakita niya talaga paano mag-lead. Sabi sa Matthew 20, 26, 28, not so with you instead, 
whoever wants to become great among you, among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Ito yung, ito yung principle ng langit. Ito yung kingdom principle. Gusto mauna, sa ulihan ka. Gusto maging, maging uh, bida, maging servant ka. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom <clears throat> for many. This is what I'm saying, no? Pandemic. Dami kong pera sa banko. Dami kong pera sa vault. <clears throat> Ang laki nung kinita ko for the past years sa business ko. Mayaman ako. I'm living comfortably. Pandemic. Kahit walang magsaradong business ko, lugi, pero buhay pa rin ako for the next 20-50 years siguro, buhay pa rin ako dahil marami akong pera. Pero ano ba? Pandemic. No, selfish thinking yun. Ito yung selfless thinking. Pandemic. Do not think about 20-50 years na ubusin mo yung pera mo yung para sarili mo. Pandemic na yun. Bakit hindi natin subukan mag-release? Di ba? Pakainin natin, bigyan natin ng grocery, bigyan natin ng pera yung mga empleyado natin, yung mga tao natin. No? So that they will see God in you. At magpasalamat sila sa Diyos. Do not think of tomorrow in a sense na na, na hindi ka kaya mag hindi kaya mag-provide ng Diyos para sa iyo. Magulat ka baka yung kayamanan mo ngayon ay mas tumago dahil sa puso mo na bukas. No? Yun ang ibig sabihin nito. We must serve our employees. Lalang lalo na ngayon sa panahon na to. Kaya I salute you sa lahat po ng mga employers, sa lahat po ng mga business owners, sa lahat ng mga leaders, mga supervisors na inuuna pa. Minsan may mga simpleng supervisor lang. Manager ng kumpanya, mabulot sa sariling pera. Hindi naman silang business owner. Yan, aabot sila. Yan sa mga empleyado na alam naman nilang kinakapos. No? So, ibig sabihin kagaya ng ating Panginoon, He came no, not to be served, but to be served. No, he, he, he did not come to be served, but to serve. No? <sighs> Isa pa, in terms of fairness no, and righteousness, we must pay a fair wage. Yan, wag po natin dinadaya ang ating mga empleyado. Wag po natin, ako, wala ka namang papel eh. So, mababa na lang babayad ko sa'yo. At, uh, kumbaga, uh, kahit na napa-violate mo yun, no? Sabi sa Malachi 3, 5, so, I'll come, so I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers against those who defraud laborers of their wages. Ooh, kalinya mo yung mga sorcerers, adulterers, perjurers. <laughs> Takawa, no? Who oppress the widows and the fatherless and deprive the foreigners among you of justice. But do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. Ayan. May mga naapi ng mga OFW, mga widows, mga fatherless. No? Baga, ino-oppress kayo. Ganun din yung ating mga laborers. Huwag natin silang no, uh, nakohin sa kanilang dapat matanggap. In Deuteronomy 24, 14-15, it says, Do not take advantage of a hired worker who is poor and needy, whether what that market is a fellow Israelite or a foreigner residing in one of your towns. Alala ko, uh, naglipat kami ng bahay, uh, pumunta ako sa isang home, sa isa, sa, ano, sa, uh, yung rental lang van, and then meron doon na mga lalaki na nag-aabang or, you know, yung panandalian na trabaho, pipikapin mo sila para tulungan ka sa trabaho, para magbuhat, maglipat. And then, uh, nakita ko yung grupo doon, sabi nila, no, sa hindi maganda yung ugali nila. Tapos may isa, no, pangalan niya si Oscar. Nakabait siya. Sabi niya, uh, I'll take uh, whatever you can pay me. Alam niyo, sa sobrang tuwa ko sa kanya, yung asking price niya, dinoble ko. Bakit? Bilnes ko siya. No, kasi, naalala ko ito eh. Sabi ng Panginoon, do not take advantage of a hired worker. 
who is poor and needy. Whether that worker is a fellow Israelite or a foreigner. Because si Oscar is a foreigner siya, no, residing in, our, in one of your towns. Pay them wages. No? Pay them their wages each day before sunset. Ganun ginawa ko. Before sunset, binalik ko siya doon kung saan siya kinuha. Binayaran ko siya ng doble because they are poor and are counting on it. Hindi lang yun. Pinakain ko pa siya. Hindi lang yun. Pinag-uwi ko pa siya ng pagkain. No? Para meron siya ng kainin. So, hindi na siya magluluto sa bahay nila. Otherwise, they may cry to the Lord against you and you will be guilty of sin. At least, eh. At nalaman ko, kwentuhan-kwentuhan, ang tatay niya pala, pastor, no, sa Guatemala. So, nakatawa. At least, hindi siya magka-cry out sa Lord na guilty ako na hindi ko siya, na, 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 na niloko ko siya. So, ganun. Ganun tayo dapat, no. Maging, maging mapagbigay tayo. Maging, uh, maging, uh, maging mabuti tayong CEO, business owner, supervisor, leader, uh, so on and so forth. So, as we end also, uh, pray to God no? to have uh, godly employees. Kasi importante rin yan. Kasi kung ikaw godly master, ask God for uh, godly employees. And uh, God will provide you no? conscientious employees. Sabi nga eh, alam nyo, our lives are um, uh, parang masterpiece. And God is our master sculptor. God starts with crude, non-distinguishable chunks of clay and begins to mold us with love and care from His Son. He begins working His grace in our lives and slowly creates in the form that resembles a work of art in human form. Alam niyo naman, ang clay has no plans of its own. No? It has no aspiration for glory, no, not even for service. Clay is clay. And it's it, it, it is even reluctant to perform its own given task. It is simply a clay. The clay is moldable. The clay is pliable, subjected to creation, desiring a creator. Kung walang creator, walang mabubuo sa clay. And totally submissive to the will of its master. Just like a clay, let's submit to God. Sabi nga sa Isaiah 64, 8. O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter, we are all the work of your hand. If you are a business owner, if you are a CEO, supervisor, manager, employer, a leader, a person who has authority, may mga followers, may mga servants under you. God is calling you to be a clay. Allow God to mold you to be a successful leader, successful Employer In Romans 12, 2, it says, Allow God to transform you. He will mold you and renew your mind as it changes your way of thinking. It will be changed from the inside out. Then you will always be able to decide what God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. That's our um, two-part mini-series. Being a salt and light in my workplace as an employee, as we discussed last Wednesday. If you want to see that video, you know you can just look back to so Facebook or YouTube ng ng Walk by Faith Church of And uh, also, ito yung ating uh, topic for this uh, Sunday, uh, being a salt and light in the workplace as an employer. This is the series about working for God, Ephesians six five. Allow me to bless you this Sunday. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you and turn His face toward you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you on Wednesday. And uh, thank you. Thank you for having us again sa living room nyo, sa, 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 maaaring sa kwarto, iba siguro sa kitchen, iba sa garahe, iba sa phone, iba sa tablet, iba sa, sa laptop. Thank you for your messages. Thank you for encouraging us. Uh, thank you for telling us that you're watching. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for um, allowing us and giving us opportunity you know, to do God's will in serving people, in uh, proclaiming the gospel, and talking about evangelism and, and discipleship and also being part of the Great Commission of God. God bless you. Happy Sunday. 
We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.